Thank you for joining us on the news now. President Mohamed Buhari on Wednesday morning swore in the new chairman of the Police Service Commission, former Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase. Arase took his oath of office at 10.05 a.m. at the Council Chamber of the Presidential Villa in Abuja in the presence of Buhari, uh, Vice President Yemi Shibajo, uh, SG of Boss Mustafa, Chief of Staff to the President Ibrahim Gambari and other Federal Executive Council members. This comes two months after the Senate confirmed him as chairperson of the Police Service Commission. Arasid, aged 65, who retired in 2016, was the 18th Indigenous Inspector General of Police between April 2015 and June 2016 and has served in various capacities, including as head of the Criminal Intelligence and Investigation Bureau of the foremost intelligence gathering unit of the Nigerian police. The president also swore in five board members of the Code of Conduct Bureau and the council also observed a moment of silence in honor of Lieutenant General Oladipodia, who died on Sunday, March 26. They are served as Chief of General Staff and Vice Chairman of the Provisional Ruling Council under the General Sani Abacha regime. But away from there now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced the presentation of certificates of return to the governors elect in 26 states where winners have been declared following the conclusion of the March 18 elections. Also, certificates are to be presented to the lawmakers elect and the relevant state legislatures across the 36 states of the Federation. In a statement last Saturday, INEC National Commissioner Fessor Sukoye had noted that Section 72, Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act of 2022 provides that the Commission is mandated to issue a certificate of return within 14 days to every candidate who has been returned elected under the law. Consequently, INEC fixed Wednesday and Friday for the issuance of certificate of return to winners of the March 18 elections, adding that the presentations will take place in INEC offices in each state. So far, the result of 26 of the 28 governorship elections have been announced, leaving the elections in Kebi and Adamawa, which were declared inconclusive. Supplementary elections are to be held in both states on Saturday, April 15th. The federal government on Tuesday gave a big pardon now. Uh, the federal government on Tuesday gave the assurance that the transition of power from President uh, Muhammad Buhari to the president-elect Bola Tinubu will be smooth and peaceful. This was as the government said the refurbishment of offices for the president and vice president-elect had been completed. Addressing journalists in Abuja on Tuesday, the chairman of the transmission or transition committee, Boss Mustafa, stressed that litigation would not stop the handover ceremony from taking place. He said the transition process in on its own course and all efforts are being made to ensure that it is smooth as on May 29th there will be a peaceful formal transfer of power to the new president. Mustafa noted that the security subcommittee had been sounded with the responsibility to ensure no one truncates the handover. As part of the transition, Mustafa also said four members of the president-elect team will be joining the federal government delegation to the a spring meeting of the World Bank. He, however, revealed that the president-elect has nominated Wali Edu and the governor of Kebu State, Atiku Bagudu, to be part of the transition committee. And now the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Iocha Ayu, who stepped aside from his position on Tuesday set to fight his suspension by Benue State High Court, McCordy on Monday. Are your special assistant on communication, Simon Imobo Swan, disclosed this shortly after the party announced the appointment of the deputy national chairman, Umaru Damagun, as the acting national chairman. He said, I will challenge the suspension order in court. The Gorov World Executive Committee in the Boko local government area of Benue State had on Sunday suspended IU for alleged anti-party activities and for failing to pay his membership dues. In the aftermath of the suspension, the Benue State Court restrained IU from parading himself as the chairman of the party following a suit filed by a former aide to the state governor, uh, 
Conrad Utan. Are you and the PDP were listed as the first and second respondents, respectively, and the case has been adjourned till April 17th for a hearing. Away from there now, former Imo State Governor Emeka Ihedioha has announced his withdrawal from the People's Democratic Party governorship primaries in the state. In a letter dated March 27th, 2023, addressed to the office of the National Chairman of the Party, Ihedio has said, in the interest of harmony and unity of the party, he has elected or has elected to make the, the personal sacrifice of withdrawing from further participation in the processes leading to the emergence of the gubernatorial candidate. Ehedi has said he is profoundly grateful for the opportunity to have served his various constituencies both as a legislator and governor and is also profound and proud of the positive impact he has made, particularly in the seven months he served as the governor of Imo State. A former Cardinal Senator, Shehu Sani, has urged international institutions and foreign countries, including the United States, Canada, and others to stop wasting funds on Nigeria's elections. The Nigerian politician said instead of earmarking huge funds to the country's elections, the global organizations and the European Union countries should pump such money into education and health sectors in rural communities. Sano revealed this point on his verified Twitter page on Wednesday, stressing that the country's education and health need more funds. Sane wrote that foreign donor agencies and foreign governments, particularly the EU countries, US and Canada, should stop funding election activities in Nigeria. And in the meantime, Nigeria's president-elect Bola Tinubu has said that he is committed to rebuilding the country and renewing the hope of the Nigerian people. In a message to Nigerians on his 71st birthday on Wednesday, Tinubu said the greatest birthday gift he has ever received is the chance to lead the country. In February, the Independent National Electoral Commission declared the former governor of Lagos as the winner of the presidential election after polling 8.7 million votes. Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party had the second highest figure with 6.9, uh, while Peter Obi of the Labour Party was next with 6.1 million votes. The president-elect said his promises were not mere words to win over citizens, but a bond with them and a chance to lead and fulfill destiny. Tinubu said he will use the day as an opportunity to reiterate his commitment to the great an important task of rebuilding the nation and renewing the hope of the Nigerian people. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Mr. Babajine Sawolu has congratulated the President-elect Shiwaji Bola Tinubu on his 20, uh, 71st uh, birthday. Governor Sawolu described Bola Tinubu, who turns 71 on Wednesday, March 29th, as a visionary, consistent lawyer, and enigmatic master strategist whose democratic credentials are scholarly materials for study in political economy. Governor Sawonlu, in a congratulatory message issued on Tuesday by his chief press secretary, Boyega Kosile, said that Nigeria is blessed to have Tinubu as our next democratically elected president from May 29, given his intellect, development focused, and they traumatized the, posi the position uh, towards governance. Governor Saolo are there that not many leaders in contemporary Nigeria are as destabilized or destabilized as Tinubu, saying his heart accommodates every section of the country. He noted that Tinubu's large heart accommodating and listening nature endeared him to millions of Nigerians who filled and filed out to vote for him in the February 25th presidential poll.